a while. It's been a while since I've had a proper homemade sort of uh, eating video done for you guys. We have homemade curry. It's chicken. I don't know what type of curry it's technically classed as, but it's just, just, just a chicken curry. We added peas to it this time to add a bit of veg to it. I think it might have just some, like, I want to say ground up veg in it anyway. Like, you know, onions and tomatoes and stuff like that and garlic. So we're going to be eating that. I'm also going to... Pepsi. Back with the Pepsi. No longer got the tango. Get in. This is nice and cold. Not that you can hear it anyway. Let's turn this up so I can hear myself. Oh, we are there. We are. I can hear myself again now. Right. But I also wanted to chat with you a little bit about Chelsea transfers. I had a comment earlier that said, please do another Chelsea Ramble video. So, and I, and I wasn't going to do it, but I thought, if I'm going to record a quick eating video, I might as well ramble about it. Uh, transfer rumours. So, let me just dig into this, see what it tastes like. I got a chip. Obviously, you guys know that I don't like rice. Not a fan of rice, so I've got chips. And a garlic and coriander naan bread. So. That's nice. And I've actually got a message. I've just got a quick reply to this. They don't know what we're on about. Anyway. A Chelsea transfer. Wow, that's a little bit spicy. I'm not going to lie to you. It's got a little ting to it right at the end. When's this going to go out? I need to decide when it's going out so I know what to talk about. It'll go out Wednesday. There we go. Anyway. So, on Monday, I'm not sure, I, I should have, I will have left a comment anyway. But on Monday we talked about some transfers regarding leads. And obviously one of them, in Gabriel, or Gabriel, however you want to say, I did mention that he was on about signing for Arsenal. Literally, I'd recorded that maybe five days ago, six days ago now, and then it's obviously come out that he signed. So, bloody hell, why every time I stop recording? But yeah, so by now he's signed for him, and I'm a little bit annoyed that I called it. I said that Arsenal bid for him. I don't wear my glasses on. Yeah, they bid for him. I'm getting so distracted today, guys. They bid for him and they got him. Chelsea, we are linked with Ben Chilwell still, we're linked with Reguillon still, as left back option, we are linked with Thiago Silva, and we'll discuss that in a bit, we're also linked with Malang Saw as a free transfer, and Kai Havertz is pretty much done, Chelsea have agreed a 100 million euro fee for him, which I think is a little bit excessive, but I think it's a case of Chelsea wanting to get the deal done and bringing a player of Havertz to the club. Now, the peas really help out this curry, I'm not going to lie to you. Now, I think it's something like 70 to 80 million up front, and then 10 to 20 million in. Um, potential add-on bonuses for the club which is very extortionate it leaves very little money left as far as i can see for any sort of meaningful centre-back discussions it leaves the door open for the for the chill world one to go through it quite a hefty price like 60 to 80 million again but again it does it does whack the budget down quite a bit but it also leaves room for Barkley to leave, and I'm not too, not too bothered about that, if I'm being honest. If I was to choose between Mount and Barkley, I'd choose Mount. And if I was to choose between Havertz and Barkley, I'd choose Havertz. So, Barkley's on out of favour, he's probably going to end up leaving with Everton looking to get him back. 
and a few other clubs looking interested to sign him. Now. If we can get a decent amount for him, I'm not going to be too unimpressed. Because at the end of the day, that's a little bit of money back into the budget. So, hopefully, that can get done now. The other two centre back options that we're going for at the minute. Tiago Silva on a free transfer. Now he is 25, I want to say 25. Also, Ben Chilwell's coming in at 50 million. Chelsea being close to the 50 million pound signing of Chilwell. I don't think that's too bad. I personally would have preferred Reguillon at 20 million. Or Four million, whatever it is, uh, if he is. Which I don't think is too bad. In fact, it's very, very good for a player of a region's stature, um, especially given the fact that Sevilla won the Europa League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, that's like molten lava there. I thought it had cooled down a bit. Um, yeah. So, as a left back option, quite honestly, I'm not too fussed. I just want a deal to be made. A left back is one of the most important positions that I need, or that Chelsea need. So, I'd rather them shore that up and get Ben up before they even. Sign Havertz to be fair. I'd rather the Chilwell deal be done before the Havertz deal. But anyway, that moves us on to, like I say, the centre backs, Thiago Silva. Look how stringy this chicken is, it's incredible. Can you see it? Chilwell goes for 35, yeah 35, which 10 years ago you'd have said 35 is retirement age, goodbye, see you later. He was very impressive for PSG against Bayern Munich who absolutely smashed us. Thiago Silva did very very well. Right, from what you can say. Chelsea's backline haven't been brilliant. But they haven't been they haven't been trash, you know. Each of them possess a different style of ability in terms of defending. Zoom is very gets the blocks in. You know, man to man sort of defending. Christiansen I don't like him. Tries to be a bit more methodical, makes a few mistakes. Tamori is rapid. Yes, he's been injured. I think he's one of our better centre-backs, in all fairness. But I also think that he can be a little bit inexperienced. <coughs> and then, on the flip side, you've got Rudiger, who's a good centre-back. He just sort of almost tries to play the ball a bit too much. And does a little bit too much, rather than just not blocking and not clearing enough. On many occasions. So, they've all got the technical ability that they need. The one thing that Lampard has noticed is that they're lacking a leader. And I think specifically, Thiago Silva embodies that. He's the player that, even if he's only here for a season or two, he will, th th what he will give within them two years, not necessarily on the pitch, but also off the pitch, is absolutely vital in order to get the other centre-backs around him up a level. Because you know what I think? All four of our centre back options that we've got, I haven't really played with the likes of John Terry when he was there. 
they were playing with the likes of Gary Neville, uh, Gary Neville, Gary Cahill, and so none of them ever really transitioned into knowing how to lead. Like they never progressed their leadership abilities, is what I'm trying to say. And none of them can really command the defense like that like we truly need. Like Ben Chilwell comes in. He shores up the defence in terms of ability. I think he's better than Alonso and Emerson. And it also frees up a space for one of them to leave and get a bit of like, money for. In all fairness, I'm thinking about it. I wouldn't be opposed to signing both Chiwo and Reguilón and selling both Alonso and Emerson. I think Chiwell and Riggy on together is better anyway. Goalkeeper wise, we're looking at um, Mike Magnan from uh, Lille. Who, in my eyes, is, is a very, very decent keeper. He's a bit one of those that have been a bit under the radar the last couple of years, but actually could be a very good signing. But I don't think he's the answer to our problems by any stretch. We need, I think, about the Chelsea goalkeepers in the past. Petacek, Kudicini, um, Courtois was better than Kappa by many, many, many levels, but I was never really Petacek level, you know, what we expect now as Chelsea players. Or Black is that. Oh, no, no, he's heading there, to be fair. I think he gets memed a lot on FIFA, but when, in, in reality, PSV had a very, very, no, Ajax. I don't know why I PSV. Ajax had a very, very good stretch in the Champions League with Onana in goal the other season. I know that hence the reason we signed Ziyech. Well, you know, hence the reasons when what led to us signing Ziyech. But Onana's still a very good keeper. And our black's going to cost far too much anyway. Especially now we're getting Havertz. So all in all, I think the Chelsea signings aren't bad. I think one thing I'm, I'm not really worried about, a little bit conscious about, is the fact that we're spending big on, on great talents, and it's like it's like, it's like 2012 all over again. You know, with the with the Willian signing, the Hazard signings. You know, the big big players that were coming into the club at the time, and it's good that we're reinvesting that way, but also at the same time. bringing through our youth players, we're doing a bit of both now. We didn't do enough of it back then in terms of bringing you through, hence the, the transfer bans and the, the rumours that were spread around Chelsea about, you know, all these, you're bringing all these international players, you've got no English player, you know, that whole bollocks that was said back in 2012, which was undoubtedly true. Nowadays, it's a case of, right, we will spend big, but we'll spend big on the, on the positions that we need to improve on, where there is no offer. I mean, we're bringing Chelsea in, he's English. But the likes of Havertz, Werner, um, Thiago Silva at centre back. Oh, last but not least, I forgot to mention him. Centre back. It's Malang Sar. Now, he's been on a lot of radars for a very long time. Now, he's got a great potential in FIFA and on Football Manager. So. I don't just want to treat it as if it's a game in real life, but, you know, it's obvious to see that the potential's there. He's been, been on a radar for about two or three seasons now. But, for the first time in a very, very long time, we've seen a young player completely dwindle down his contract in order to move to a better club. He's a free agent. He's 21 years old, maybe 22 now, given the fact that we're like late into the 2020 season. Well, it's the end of the 2020 season, you know. So he might be 22 now. But a very, very young, promising centre back. Coming from the French League, if we could secure him and Thiago Silva both free transfers and only have to pay their wages, that is a major bonus. I'd do it regardless of whether. He fits in or not. 
I'd get him, get him on a relatively okay wage, something that isn't going to break the bank. We're not paying. If he was, if he had three years on his contract, we'd be paying thirty to fifty million for him. We're paying zero. I'd get him whatever the cost. I'd, I'd, I'd just pay. I don't know, hundred k a week, eight seventy five to hundred k a week for him. Bring him in. He's a young centre back. It's great rotation. Adds depth. Allows us to get rid of either Zuba. No, I get rid of Christiansen. In my personal opinion, Christiansen is terrible. He needs to go. I'm yet to see him give a convincing performance. So, oh mate, between Curry and Pepsi, I'm burping. But I'm hungry. So yeah, they're all the players that we're linked with, I think. For the first time in a while, I'm slightly convinced by all the players that we're linked with. Like, if you'd have said three months ago that you linked with Ben Chilwell for 80 million and gone, that's a bit expensive. But now we get into the start of next season, because it's only a month or it's less than a month or it's like three weeks away. We need to be bringing these players in. And now that it's lowered to about 50 million, that's not that bad. All things considering, 80 million for Maguire. He's in prison, mate. Well, no, it's not. He's been that hard in Apple. As I'm recording this, he's, he's the lawyers are in Greece. So, yeah. You get only 50 for Chilwell. Um, I think Leicester fans are going to be happy with 50 million because it gives them 50 million to spend on another player. They might even end up with Regio, which I won't be happy with. But it allows Leicester an extra 50 million to spend and improve. And give Chelsea a solid Premier League left back that, you know, he isn't bad by any stretch of the imagination. Yes, there's been a few performances at the back end of this season where he hasn't looked convincing. But I think, I think the whole Leicester squad have. Vardy wasn't performing incredibly well at the end of the season. Uh, Madison was injured, I'm pretty sure. He's just signed a new four-year contract. Uh, so Yun Chu, he wasn't looking great. Indeed, he wasn't praying brilliantly. Praying? Playing brilliantly. And so, you know, you can't really hold, can't really hold Chilwell accountable and not the other players, you know. Four drops. I'm bread in my drink. Um, but yeah, so for the first time in a while, I'm, I'm convinced by everyone we're linked with. Mike Magnan, probably not, but in other words, we've also signed uh, Javier, and I'm sorry for butchering his name, butchering uh, Mbuyamba, Javier Mbuyamba, the 18 year old centre back from Netherlands, which a Chelsea link to a Dutch centre-back, you think Nathan Ake, don't you? And then Man City went and signed him. So, here we go. Also, shout out to everyone that's been playing on my Football Manager online series. Well, not series, but season. The online season's on there. The Football Manager has been insane. I was going through... Um, wait, we've not, we're not logging into the next season. We're just past the first transfer window in the second season. I say first season, second, I meant to say second season. Right, we just passed September, so just passed the transfer window on their second season. And obviously, all the youth prospects are there. And Benji, if you're out there, would be up. Because we were looking at the youth prospects. I hear just story time now. Looking at the youth prospects, seeing anyone aged between 16 and 18, I think I say it, that the highest value in each position. It's going back. Fucking Thomas the Tank Engine's being filmed out my back on, you know. But yeah, so we're looking through, and there was like strikers, potential 180. I was thinking, oh, scout him. See how much you're looking for. Goalkeepers. 16 years old. Dutch. 
current ability. 102. is I think either 190 or 195 Ronaldo's is 196 but I think he's already there when you start the game Messi's is 196 his goalkeeper's 197 potential what insane These are just a few other uh, Chelsea transfers. Tagli Afigo. But it's looking like a one now anyway. Lewis Dunk. He's actually signed a new deal for Brian, so that's out the window. Ben Foster from Watford. I wasn't happy with that. I saw that and thought, what the fuck are they doing? But then I looked at the stats, and he's actually not been too bad, given it was Watford that got relegated and he's been under a lot of fire. And obviously the defence was poor for Watford. But his natural shot stopper is probably not the worst. Uh, I also went on Twitter and everyone seemed to be liking it. Everyone's like, oh, Ben Foster is a solid keeper. Yeah, he's done very well. And I'm thinking, hmm, fair enough. Old Black's there. And obviously, we know about Old Black is £110 million. A little bit pricey. If they can dwindle that down to 85 90 I don't think that's, that's bad at all. Um. Declan Rice, or maybe I'd say 70 million plus Kepa. I think that's a decent deal. That values Kepa at only 40 million though. Declan Rice. Chelsea have received, oh no, West Ham received a 50 million bid. But say that his price tag's at 80. I think that's too high for Declan Rice, I'm sorry. We talk about overvalue in English, doesn't if value, if if Chilwell is worth 50, and I think that's a little bit pricey, but I can understand it. Leicester have done well over the past few seasons. Chilwell's nice and young, he's got great potential. There's a, there's a, there's a uh, you know, there's an argument for it. Declan Rice plays CDM and they value him at 80 million. No, I'm not having it. No, 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 I'm not having it. Ben White. I wouldn't be too opposed to having. I think he had a very good season for Leeds. Looked like an absolute rock at the back. And also at the same time possesses some sort of leadership qualities. Of you know, being able to command a command a defensive line, so I think that's what we need. Especially at a young age. And again, leave the door open for what any of the centre backs to leave. And then Sergio Aguillon's here. Sergio Aguillon, sorry. Jose Jimenez. Frank Lampard has made Atletico defender his first choice addition to his side side's defence this summer. Well that was on August the sixth, when I on the twenty fourth, so that was a while ago. And then Nick Pope, who I think is a brilliant keeper. And actually, I, I completely can't I can't believe I overlooked him properly when I was making that um, Premier League Awards video and I put Edison in. You guys were commenting saying, how have you not put Nick Pope in? I was like, how have I not put Nick Pope in? He should have been there. I don't even know whether I mentioned it during the video, but he should have been third, second or third choice, easy, over Edison at least. You know, there was both arguments for Alison and... Um, Dean Henderson, Dean Henderson because he's had an incredible season at Sheffield. Allison because even though injured for quite a bit throughout the season, um, it was still up there in terms of stats. So to have less games and very similar stats proves it is an incredible goalkeeper. Edison shouldn't have been up there. Right, that's it, I'm done.
Hi. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. I'll be back pretty soon. With, I don't know what I'm doing. Tomorrow's video is a Leicester transfers video, so we'll look at those. And then, we've got Wolves and Everton left to do after this. Which would be pretty cool. So, I hope you guys 